What's going on there YouTube and welcome back to another comic book video. This is the channel where we sit down and cover different comic book stories from different comic book companies. Today we're going to jump back over to Marvel Comics and we are going to begin our coverage over the origin of the Hobgoblin. Yes, the Hobgoblin, a fan favorite. Now, in this video right here, we're going to cover four issues. Amazing Spider-Man number 238, 239, 244, and 245. These are the first four books of the Hobgoblin. Now, with that being said, later on this week or maybe next week, we're going to cover another three or four issues of the origin of Hobgoblin. Because the thing is, guys, Marvel made this a mess in the 1980s and the 1990s on who was the Hobgoblin. You see what I mean as we go through the books that had the Hobgoblin there and trying to figure out who was the Hobgoblin. But with that being said, I do hope you enjoy today's comic book video. And if you do, hit that like button down below and subscribe. But here we go, The Origin of Hobgoblin, part one. Okay, so before we dive into the actual origin of the Hobgoblin, I do want to say I did skip over three issues. And the reason why is because the first three issues did show the first appearance of Roderick Kingsley. But I skipped over it because, honestly, it wasn't a very interesting storyline. It was Marvel trying to use a new villain named Eldana and she was going after Kingsley for different reasons. But honestly, I skipped over it because it wasn't a good storyline. Now, with that being said, we're going to pick up with The Amazing Spider-Man number 238. And with this issue, we open up with Peter Parker with his Aunt May and her boyfriend Nathan. Now, at this point, Aunt May is trying to open up her own business, which is a boarding home for seniors. So... A bunch of seniors going to live in Aunt May's house and they're going to pay her some money for rent. Really? Not a bad job, Aunt May. Get that money. Now, with that being said, it does lead to Peter Parker kind of thinking back to his Uncle Ben, but now seeing his Aunt May go from that tragic moment in life and seeing her now as a strong, happy woman. Now, after they leave the office, sign the paperwork to say, hey, she now has legit business. There is a car that almost runs over Aunt May and Nathan and Peter Parker as well. And with that happening, it makes Peter Parker very angry. And so he decides to leave his aunt and her boyfriend behind to go figure out why was this car in such a hurry that he almost hit three innocent people. Now, Roger Stern does an amazing job to tell us that this new villain at this time in Marvel Comics is going to be a spinoff from the Green Goblin. And you'll see what I mean here in a minute. Because you do have Peter Parker being Spider-Man and chasing after the thugs who almost ran over Aunt May, her boyfriend Nathan, and Peter Parker. And so it does lead into an intense police chase where you have two thugs just trying to get away from Spider-Man and also the police. Now, one thug does get captured, which is great but one thug does get away. But before he gets away, we do see Spider-Man trying to chase down this thug. This thug continues to run away, and this thug gets lucky left and right up to the point where he finally does lose Spider-Man. Except after he does leave, or not leave, lose Spider-Man, that is when he finds a hidden bunker. In this bunker, of course, it has all of Norman Osborn old Green Goblin tech and suit. And so right off the bat, that is Roger Stern saying, this new character is going to be a spinoff from the Green Goblin. Now, after that, we do get a page where you have Aunt May getting home and getting a phone call from Anna. Anna is actually the aunt to Mary Jane. And this is Marvel reminding us at this point, Mary Jane and Peter Parker are not together. They have some issues. They're not really talking, but they're not together. With that being said, we do jump back over to Peter Parker because Peter Parker actually did attach a camera 
to a police car in that police chase from earlier so he could get some pictures to take to the Daily Bugle so he can get some money because, of course, Peter Parker always needs some money. But with that, you do have Robinson, who does work there, telling Peter Parker that the police chase actually ended at one of Norman Osborn old warehouse. Spider-Man did not know that. The police chase ended there and he had no clue. So with that happening, he just left. But now you have Robbie telling Peter Parker, yeah, man, the police chase ended at Norman Osborn old warehouse. And that makes Peter Parker remember Norman Osborn quickly because what happened between him and Norman Osborn, the death of Gwen Stacy, and also Norman Osborn being the father to Harry Osborn, Peter Parker's best friend, and Norman Osborn being the Green Goblin. Now, we do get a page where we get that thug that got away earlier that found one of the many secret bases of Norman Osborn, where he found a lot of Green Goblin texts and suits. He calls up a mysterious person who may be intrigued in buying the Green Goblin tech and suit from him. Not only buy it, but take it out of his hands. And of course, this is our first look of someone becoming the Hobgoblin. Now, we do get back to Peter Parker and Robbie Robinson on their way home from the Daily Bugle, except on their way home, you do have Robbie get a call about another incident happening nearby at a Norman Osborn warehouse. So, of course, you do have Peter Parker and Robbie Robertson go to that location where they do run into another photographer named Lance Bannon. Honestly, do not worry about him. He's just here to be like, hey, I'm Peter Parker's arch rival when it comes to taking photos for the Daily Bugle. That is it. Moving on. Of course, this is another secret base that Norman Osborn had in New York City where he kept his Green Goblin tech and suit at. And so with that being said, you do have Peter Parker go into the building to confirm for himself that someone is going around and basically now trying to gather up Norman Osborn old Green Goblin tech. And he's kind of wondering who that person could be. Now getting back to our mysterious character and Georgie, the thug that got away from Spider-Man earlier, we see them driving an empty van. Now our mysterious character, he does get out of the van. And this is Roger Stern telling us this guy here, he's going to make sure that there is no way anything can get back to him. Because he said, listen, if Georgie gets caught, the police could somehow make a connection between Georgie and our mysterious character. So our mysterious character basically blows up the empty van that Georgie was in. Now Georgie is dead. Our mysterious character goes into his home where he sits down and he starts to make his hobgoblin outfit. The mask, the cape, the suit, everything. Now the tech, the gear, the weapons, all that stuff, all that comes from Green Goblin. And so he's going to use all the weapons that Norman Osborn made over the years to help boost up his chance to become a better Goblin. Now, you do have our new Hobgoblin Goblin talking about Norman Osborn as a madman, but at the same time, kind of giving him praise because everything he made when he was the Green Goblin is amazing to this mysterious character. And so, yes... The new Hobgoblin is saying, yes, Norman Osborn is a madman, but he was a brilliant madman. And I'm going to do my best job to replace that madman and become the Hobgoblin. And this is the moment we get the Hobgoblin, which is kind of cool. So there we go. First issue down. Now, with Amazing Spider-Man number 239, it does open up with Hobgoblin already attacking the city. He's already causing havoc. He's attacking different places that used to belong to Norman Osborn, warehouses that now belong to Oscorp. And so with that happening, you do have some board members called the person who's in charge of Oscorp, which is... Harry Osborn, the son of Norman Osborn. And they asked Harry Osborn, did you know your father had hidden rooms set in places that were not on the blueprints? 
we had no idea about this, did you? And Harry has to say, no, I had no idea about my dad's hidden rooms in all of these different warehouses across New York City. Now word gets out quickly because you have the Daily Bugle just printing copies left and right to tell New York someone is going around attacking random warehouses that used to belong to Norman Osborne. Of course, our mysterious character gets a copy of that newspaper and he is pleased because now word is getting out about a new threat in New York City, a new villain. Now this is also the moment where we find out that our mysterious character has the old journals of Norman Osborn when he was the Green Goblin. And so with that happening, that means he knows all of Norman Osborn's old plans, where all the warehouses are at, and possibly these journals could have the secret identity of Spider-Man. Now, getting over to Peter Parker, the star of the book, we do see him in the hospital checking up on Black Cat because in an earlier story, Black Cat got shot by one of Doc Ock thugs. So right now, of course, she is in the hospital. But at this point, Spider-Man is technically dating Black Cat. So he wanna make sure that his lady is okay. Now, a couple rooms down from Black Cat, someone else is also in the hospital, and that person is Madame Webb, who is a psychic character that's been around in Spider-Man comics for a hot second at this point. But she was also injured by the Juggernaut when he came through in an earlier story. So of course, you do have Peter Parker stop by as Spider-Man to make sure that she is okay as well. But after doing that, he has to leave because he wants to go back out there to figure out who in the world is going out there attacking the different warehouses that used to belong to Norman Osborn. So we do jump over to Lance Bannon. Now remember, I said earlier, Lance Bannon's a character who's not that important, but I'm gonna cover this moment because this is a horrible moment for the character. Because you have Lance taking photos of his girlfriend, Amy Powell, and Amy Powell is posing in a way where Lance thinks that she is trying to pose for an adult magazine. So he gets upset. Then she finds some photos that he took of Spider-Man, wondering why he has not given it over to the Daily Bugle, because she knows why, because Peter Parker gets better pictures. And so of course, now he's even more upset. Then she goes on to say he needs to be careful because if Peter Parker can take better photos, meaning that taking your job away, he might take your girlfriend away as well. Then she leaves after she asks him out and he says no, wondering why he is upset. Like, because everything you just said to the man is rude and crazy. Now, it doesn't stop there because you didn't have Peter Parker getting back home to take a shower to relax because he realized that he smells but after his shower, he's trying to catch some Z's to relax. And then he gets a phone call from Amy Powell, the girlfriend of Lance, where she's like, hey, Peter, we should totally go out. And Peter's like, who? What? No. Click? Like, no, I'm trying to relax. But I'm like, Lance, she was serious. She's gonna leave you for Peter Parker. Thank God Peter Parker said no, but this girl, she gotta go. Now the second half of this book is just a fight between Spider-Man and Hobgoblin. And I really do like that because after you do have Spider-Man go to one of the many warehouses that used to belong to Norman Osborn, and of course Hobgoblin was in that warehouse, that Spider-Man went to, while they're fighting against each other, they realize the strength and weakness that their opponent has. Because for Spider-Man, he realized Hobgoblin has impressive tech that gives him the edge. But the problem is Hobgoblin does not have the super strength 
that Green Goblin had. Remember, when it came to Norman Osborn, Green Goblin, he had the Oz formula that kind of really gave him the edge to give him the edge to fight against Spider-Man, that super strength. And so with that being said, Hobgoblin does not have that formula. So right now, he's kind of just a regular person. But for Hobgoblin, he realized that yes, his tech gives him the edge against Spider-Man, but his problem is he does not have the super strength to deal with Spider-Man. And so he knows that he needs to figure out what did Norman Osborn do to give himself the edge to fight against Spider-Man. And so, of course, he is going to look back into those old journals that he found from Norman Osborn to figure out what did Norman Osborn do. After that, Spider-Man's like, listen, I had one heck of a day, but now I know I have a new powerful villain out there and I need to figure out who this new villain is. And that's the end of Amazing Spider-Man number 239. Now with Amazing Spider-Man number 244, it does open up with Peter Parker making out with Black Cat, reminding us that these two characters were dating at this point in Marvel Comics. But after that moment right there, we do jump forward to the point where you have Peter Parker go back to Empire State University. This is the moment where we all know if you are a big time Spider-Man fan, where Peter Parker quits graduate school. That is something very important because after this moment right here, Aunt May kind of gets upset with Peter Parker for a long time that he had quit graduate school. So the first half of this issue is just him going around Empire State University, trying to get everybody's signature that he needs that will officially let him quit graduate school. And then after this moment, we're going to have Aunt May be mad for a very long period of time in Marvel Comics. So the next two pages is really Mary Jane meeting up with Harry Osborn and his wife at this point in Marvel Comics, Liz Allen. Now remember, in the earlier issues in this video, Mary Jane was actually in Florida with her Aunt Anna. But at this point in Marvel Comics, she just got back in town and you have Harry Osborn and Liz Allen wondering if she has been talking to Peter Parker. Of course, they have not been talking because she did turn down his previous proposal for marriage. But after that, you do have Harry Osborn and Liz Allen going to one of their corporate office to meet up with the rest of the board members. Except when they walk into the office, that is the moment they find out that someone has attacked the corporate office people and tied them all up. And the question is, who done it? We know who. It was the Hobgoblin. Now, once again, word does get out very quickly about the corporate office of Oscorp being attacked and word does get to Spider-Man. And so with word getting to Spider-Man, he does go by the police department to see his old friend, Captain D. Wolf. Now, unfortunately, she is not there, but Spider-Man does sneak into her office to look at the police reports. Once he does that right there, he does learn from one witness report that that person who attacked the corporate office just wanted to know the locations of all the different chemical warehouses that Oscorp still owns. And so to Spider-Man and to us, we know it has to be Hobgoblin because Hobgoblin barely got away from Spider-Man back in Amazing Spider-Man number 239. And so with that happening, we know it must be Hobgoblin trying to get the formula that made Norman Osborn the Green Goblin. Remember that Norman Osborn became the Green Goblin thanks to the Goblin formula and it gave him super strength, something Hobgoblin does not have. And so it must be him trying to get the formula. But on top of that, you do have Spider-Man overhear some cops talking about how there are a group of cops right now in a shootout with some thugs at Pier 3. Pier 3 is a warehouse of chemicals that belong to Oscorp. 
so it must be Hobgoblin maybe trying to get the chemicals. Now you do have Spider-Man go to Pier 3 because the chemical warehouse belongs to Oscorp and he is hoping to stop the gunfight between the police officers and the thugs. Now once Spider-Man gets there and he does try to stop the thugs who are shooting at the police, we come to find out there is another person who is hiding out in the truck. Now at first we are left to believe that this is the Hobgoblin and again, we still have no idea at this point who the Hobgoblin is. But telling you right now, this guy right here is not the Hobgoblin. Matter of fact, we're going to learn who this mysterious driver is here at the moment. But either way, this mysterious character knows that he needs some kind of diversion to get away from Spider-Man. So what he does is he throws a bunch of razor bats at Spider-Man, then throws a pumpkin bomb. Now, the pumpkin bomb is the bigger problem because this is a chemical warehouse. As soon as a small part of this warehouse get caught on fire, that means the whole warehouse could blow up soon. So that diversion lets the driver get away. Yes, Spider-Man does throw a spider tracer on the truck, but Spider-Man does not follow that thug because the rest of the thugs are still trapped inside the warehouse. So Spider-Man must go save them first before he can go follow the thug that got away in the truck. And you would think that Spider-Man would be able to follow the truck because he did throw a spider tracer. We kind of find out at the very last minute there was some kind of switch where the chemicals got moved to a different truck. And so the original truck that has the spider tracer on it is now empty. But Spider-Man still follows that truck because his spider tracer is telling him, hey, the truck is here, it's inside now a 18-wheeler truck. Spider-Man does try to stop it, but once he does, he realizes that, hey, all of the chemicals are now gone. So the question is, where did the chemicals go? Well, we see the truck go to Long Island. And this is the moment we get to learn about the person that was driving the truck. His name is Lefty Donovan. That name is going to be very important for later parts in this video right here, or the last part really. But we do see Lefty Donovan walk into this house that he drove to. Of course, come to find out that Lefty Donovan actually works for the Hobgoblin. And so this was the Hobgoblin getting what he wanted, the chemicals that belong to Norman Osborn to hopefully recreate the Goblin formula to give him the strength he needs to finally defeat Spider-Man. And so with Amazing Spider-Man number 245, we pick up with Spider-Man going to the district attorney's office, which of course is Blake Tower. Now, Blake Tower has been around for a tad bit in Spider-Man comics at this point in Marvel, but the reason why Spider-Man came here for is to hopefully gather some kind of information about Lefty Donovan. Now, remember, we now know Lefty Donovan is not the Hobgoblin. Lefty Donovan met up with the real Hobgoblin at the end of the last issue, but for Spider-Man, he does not know that. And so to him, it has to be Lefty Donovan, who is the Hobgoblin, because he was the only one to be identified by the police officers. And so it's Spider-Man coming here saying, hey, Blake, let me look at some police reports about Lefty Donovan. And Blake tells him no, because Spider-Man is a vigilante. He is not an officer. He has no clearance to look at any kind of police reports like the Avengers. Now you do have Blake ask Spider-Man, what is the big deal with the Hobgoblin? Spider-Man is afraid to tell Blake because it will basically tell the world that Norman Osborn was the Green Goblin. That was something that was not shared to the world at all. And so right now you have Spider-Man leave to go figure out how can he learn more about Lefty Donovan. Now there is a set of pages where we're left to believe that this is the Hobgoblin 
beginning to work on the chemicals that made Norman Osborn the Green Goblin. He is trying to recreate this. Now, of course, this is not Hobgoblin. This is someone else. But you do have this person realize that there is some kind of bad reaction between all the different chemicals. And so it leads to a small explosion that does burn this mysterious man's face and starts a fire in this house. Now this man is lucky because someone else does come by the house to run in there, pull him out of the house, try to go back in there to see if anybody else was in the house and the house does blow up. So that other person is now dead. But our original guy, the one who got his face all burned up, he is lucky that police came, they took him away, and he is going to live, but of course, with some a very badly burned face. Getting back over to Spider-Man, we see him swing over to the Daily Bugle to get the chance to look over some old reports about Lefty Donovan to learn more about him. Unfortunately for Spider-Man, he is greeted by Betty Brent. Well, at this point, she was Betty Leeds because she was married to Ned Leeds. Now, moving on, this is Betty Leeds coming to Peter Parker like a big sister, an old friend, whatever. But she's like, hey, Peter, you should totally come with me and get a free meal with me and my husband. Peter's like, hey. A free meal? I am not going to turn that down at all. Let's go, girl. And so he does leave with Betty to go get a free meal. Now, before we learn the real reason why Betty is trying to give Peter a free meal, we see that JJ, J. Jonah Jameson, walks by Peter and Betty, and he's kind of nice to them. And it throws them off like, wait, why is JJ being nice? But unfortunately, we cannot worry about that because we have to jump over to the actual dinner because this was Betty and Ned trying to get Peter Parker and Mary Jane back together. Remember, Peter Parker and Mary Jane are not together. Peter Parker is dating Black Cat as Spider-Man. And so right now he's like, oh my gosh, it was a trick to get me and my ex-girl together lordy and also he's still thinking about black cat as well so he has feelings for both women at this point in marvel comics but he does tell us that ever since he has been trying to figure out more about lefty donovan trying to check up on black cat and other things going on it has been three weeks three weeks with that being said that means the guy who try to recreate the Norman Osborn goblin formula who got burned by it? Well, he got burned three weeks ago. Now we learned this because our mysterious character from earlier who was working on the Norman Osborn goblin formula to recreate it, he wakes up after being burned in the face and being knocked out for three weeks. And so right now this man has some memory loss but he begins to remember different things about himself. Throughout the next panels, we see him get up, he takes a guy out to get a disguise, to sneak out of the hospital, to move forward with that. He does go on back to the house that got burned down. He then finds a secret room that is holding all this different hobgoblin stuff. This man, is beginning to believe that he is actually the hobgoblin. He puts it on, he gets on the glider, and he's like, yes, I must be the hobgoblin. That's right, all of this is mine. And so now this man, he has the Norman Osborn goblin formula in him. Yes, his face was burned, but he was hit with the chemical, meaning that he does have the super strength, but now he also has all the tech to make him the Hobgoblin. He believes he is the Hobgoblin. Now, getting back to Spider-Man, we see him actually meet up with an officer named Lou Sender. Lou Sender has been a close friend of Peter Parker 
as a way to kind of help Peter Parker out with some police work. And this is Spider-Man going to Lou to hopefully get a look at some old re police reports about Lefty Donovan, which you do have Lou Sender give Spider-Man the chance to look at some police reports as he steps out of the office. But after Spider-Man does gather some information about Lefty Donovan, that is the moment you have Lou come back in to tell Spider-Man, hey, Hobgoblin right now is attacking New York and he is calling out your name for battle. So leave my office, get down there and fight that man to save innocent people lives. Now we do get a fight between Spider-Man and Lefty Donovan who is Hobgoblin. And I like this fight because this is Spider-Man realizing what it would be like to fight against Hobgoblin now with the super strength that Green Goblin used to have. For Spider-Man, he was fighting Hobgoblin in the past without the super strength and he was having a hard time. Now you're saying that this is a Goblin that has super strength, which means for Spider-Man, this is going to be a tough battle. But remember, this is not the original Hobgoblin. This is Lefty Donovan. And there is a reason why Lefty Donovan is here for, and it will be explained to us here in a minute. But you do have Spider-Man fighting against Lefty for a few pages until the moment Spider-Man is able to throw a pumpkin bomb back at Lefty to take him out. Now, remember, Lefty's face was badly burned, but Spider-Man can still tell that it is Lefty Donovan who is this current Hobgoblin. But for Spider-Man, he's wondering, there's no way Lefty Donovan did all of this. And you have Lefty talking about the boss. And so the question is, who is the boss to Lefty Donovan? Except someone turns on the glider. And the problem is Lefty Donovan's foot is still stuck in the glider. And so the glider begins to fly off by itself. And the problem is Spider-Man can't stop it. The glider crash into a building explodes and now Lefty Donovan is dead. We then jump over to the original Hobgoblin and he tells us that was part of his plan. He was the one who was controlling the glider from somewhere else to get rid of Lefty Donovan before he could reveal who is behind all of this Hobgoblin mess. But he tells us that the reason why he had Lefty Donovan do all of this was because he wanted to find a way to recreate the Goblin formula but make sure to find a way to recreate it without having anything bad happening like what happened to Lefty Donovan. The chemicals exploded in Lefty's face. So now he has a way to recreate the Goblin formula without an explosion happening. But also he tells us that he, do, he did some kind of post-hypno command to make Lefty believe that he was the Hobgoblin to test out what would it be like for a Hobgoblin to fight against Spider-Man. But the book ends there with the original Hobgoblin still out there, but now having the Goblin formula inside of him. And this is where we are going to end today's comic book video. So with that being said, please hit the like button down below and subscribe. Also, if you have any suggestions on books I should read, please let me know in the comments below. But we're gonna cover part two of the origin of Hobgoblin. I'm hoping sometimes this week or next week, we'll see. But honestly, this is a very interesting story for the Hobgoblin. See y'all next time.